Well, it's a rare decision that can anger both Christian groups and atheists, but uh, President Obama has done that. David Schuster is live at the politics desk with the big debate happening today. David. Yeah, Tamron, President Obama opted not to have a service in the White House today to mark the National Day of Prayer. That ends President Bush's eight-year-long tradition. The decision has Christian groups upset, accusing the president of not fully recognizing the importance of prayer. And atheists wish President Obama would go farther and put a stop to the tradition altogether. With this now live, I'm SNBC analyst Pat Buchanan and nationally syndicated radio talk show host Bill Press. Um, Bill, even if the president isn't feeling the, the need to have some sort of prayer politically, mm -hmm. isn't this kind of stupid not to have one just because of the inevitable criticism that he's getting? No, I think it shows that he is a man of prayer, but he doesn't feel he has to pray on national television, David. Look, let's be honest. You, you use the word politics. This isn't anything to do with religion. This is all about politics. The National Day of Prayer, started by Harry Truman in 52, made on the first day of Thursday by President Ronald Reagan, was sort of celebrated around the country. Bush did it in the White House in a prayer service in the East Room only to pay back his supporters from the religious right. President Obama's just not going to play that political game. Here's a statement from the National Day of Prayer Task Force. We are disappointed in the lack of participation by the Obama administration. At this time in our country's history, we would hope our president would recognize more fully the importance of prayer. Hey, Pat, how do you know that he doesn't recognize the importance of prayer? Well, I don't know what he does personally, frankly, but what he's done here is clearly disrespect the Christian community deliberately. We've just been talking about a piece in Newsweek, a cover story, the end of Christian America, and the dechristianization of the country is proceeding apace, and there's no doubt what Obama do has done here has give a sort of victory, a moral victory, to the forces of secularism and atheism, which are on the rise in America, and he, I think, has clearly disrespected and insulted an awful lot of Christians for no good reason whatsoever. Why he couldn't have a breakfast at the White House, a prayer service, an ecumenical prayer service with Jews and Muslims and Hindus and Bill Press, I don't know. Well, listen, David, come on. We can't, Obama cannot de-Christianize America. America is not a Christian country. Read the Constitution. <laughs> I mean, we have never been a Christian country. We are not today. And to turn the White House over to Christians on the day, or for a day, a worship service in the White House is totally antithetical to the United States Constitution and the separation of church and state. And I would remind yeah. Pat, if you are a Christian and you read the Gospels, Jesus said when you pray, Pray in secret, and your father, who hears you in secret, will reward you. He didn't say do it on national television to show off, Pat. Come right. on. Well, we hope Obama's doing that in his closet. But look, this is bipartisan. It is Republican and Democrat. It's from Harry Truman and from everyone else down the line. Now, America is 2% or 1% Jewish. It is 2 or 1% Muslim, less than that Hindu. And even under the new Newsweek checking that Pew poll, 75% Christian. Christians built this country. And the idea that you have an ecumenical service that include them and others is nothing, is not not unconstitutional. They've been doing it for 40 years, and so when did it become unconstitutional? Hey, Pat, it was Pat, maybe they've been wrong for 40 years. What about those yeah. people who think that maybe by turning the White House into some sort of church, it diminishes exactly. the significance of actual churches? Well, they can. If people can hold that opinion. Barack Obama can throw I mean, throw the Christmas uh, pageant out of the out of the White House, do anything he wants. But we have a right to say exactly what he is doing, which is he is advancing the de the basically driving Christianity out of the public school and public square of a country that was predominantly built by Christians. Now, right. Israel is a Jewish country. Polish is Catholic. We are Christian. Pat, come on, the, you know the Constitution. There is no official state religion. I, and George Bush pretended there was just simply because he was, it was payback time for his political supporters. But David, I'd like to point out, I don't even think you should have signed this proclamation today. Listen, Thomas sure. Jefferson and James Madison, when they were president, they refused to sign this very same kind of proclamations mm -hmm. asking for days of prayer. Right. I think it's significant that our founders refused to do this 
uh, and uh, we just look the other way when modern presidents do. Let's go back to our real well, let roots, Let me talk Pat. about that state religion. Let, let me talk about state religion. There's no doubt that nine states had state religions. The Constitution of the United States says there should be no established national religion. But what Obama is doing, when you drive Christianity out of everywhere, oh, de that. facto you establish, <laughs> de facto you establish secularism no. as the state religion of the United States. Pat, That's what's being done. You keep saying Pat, de-Christianize, indicating that Christianity is our official religion. It is I not. Did not. <laughs> and Pat, as far as the term of being the country. official religion, <laughs> hey Pat, I know for a fact that they do not have uh, Jewish national worship prayer services at the Prime Minister's home in, uh, in Israel, but in any case, a whole different issue. <laughs> Pat, he's, he's a secularist right. in Jerusalem. <laughs> Bill Press, <laughs> always my friend. Thank you both very much. Great to see you both this morning. All right, thanks, All right. David. Right. All right, thank you. In the past hour,